simple variation of the Pong game that we're going to build in this tutorial. Let's get started. Here we are in Scratch, and the first thing we're going to do is give our project a name. And we're going to do a file save. After that, we're going to replace Scratchy here with some other sprites. So we're going to come over here, and we're going to delete this sprite. Now we're going to uh, insert a couple of new sprites that we're going to be using. We're going to need a ball. And we're also going to need a paddle. Here's a paddle right here. And we're going to add a few butterflies at the top of the screen, so let's put those in. If you don't like the butterflies, you can pick any other sprite that appeals to you. I think I like this one. Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to size our sprites to be appropriate for this game. So the butterflies we're going to make a lot smaller. We're going to just start with one butterfly and then at the end I'm going to show you how to duplicate this sprite uh, after all the code's already been added so we won't have to write the code multiple times for each butterfly. Let's cl click on the shrink button and then we can just shrink this butterfly to a much smaller size and then I can just position it at the top of the screen. The paddle will be at the bottom of the screen and the ball, it doesn't really matter where we start that. I'll just leave it over here for now. Let's start by programming the paddle. So to do that I'm going to click on the paddle the sprite down here on the bottom and you can see there's no code here right now for the sprite. And what we want to do is we want to put the paddle under user control. So I'm going to just come over here and say that when the left arrow button is pressed. I want these, uh, the paddle to move a little bit to the left. So let's do that with uh, this button, uh, this blue block right here. And I want to move to the left, so I'm going to use a negative. And I can duplicate this code block by hovering over it and using the right mouse button and hitting duplicate. And I want to do the same thing now for the right arrow. And this time I want to head in the right direction instead of the left, so I want to remove the negative sign from the number. Okay, so let's just uh, start this pro game right out right now and see if we can control the paddle. So here I am pressing the left button. Here I am pressing the right button. And we see the paddle is already working. And that's the only code we're going to add for the paddle. The next piece of code we're going to write is going to be for this yellow ball. To do that, I'm going to click on the yellow ball sprite down here, and you can see it's a clean slate right now. What we're going to do is we're going to start the ball at the top, and we're going to create uh, some motion for the ball in a downward direction. And then when it hits one of the edges, we want it to bounce. We also want it to bounce when it hits the paddle. Now, uh, it, it's going to be a little easier for us to work with here if we can put up a grid initially in the background so we can see where all the angles are, what all the X and Y values are of our grid. So to do that, I'm going to click on this new backdrop button right here on the bottom left, and then I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom till I get to this XY grid. Now, the, the XY grid shows up here. We're not going to leave this at the end of the game. We'll switch it to a more appropriate backdrop. But during the development of the game, it's going to be advantageous for us to have this. Let's have a quick look at the grid right here. We can see that it's a rectangular grid. X is in the side-to-side -side direction, left to right, and Y, of course, is top to bottom. Now, there's some interesting things about the way that Sprite calculates angles versus what you might have learned in math class, and it's worth going over a little bit. Uh, in math class, you learned that zero degrees is coincident with the x-axis, and if we have positive angles, we go in the upward direction, and negative angles go in the downward uh, direction. But in Scratch, uh, the calculations are slightly different. Zero is assumed to be in the upward y direction, and uh, when you have a positive angle, it's actually going to go counterclockwise instead of clockwise. And so 45 degrees would be like this, and 90 degrees would be here, and 180 degrees would be here. So with that in mind, we're going to start the ball at the top of the screen. So after clicking on the ball sprite picture down here, you can see that if we move the ball, 
that the current position of the ball is going to be displayed on the blue blocks here under the motion and we want to start the ball up here somewhere now you can also see that the top of the screen is going to be x equals 0 and y equals 180 that's labeled by our grid here we want to start the ball near the top somewhere right around here so it looks like it's going to be somewhere near x equals 0 and y equals 150 so why don't we decide to put a flag marker this is what's going to happen when the game is started uh, we'll just decide to put the ball right at x equals 0 and y equals 150 as soon as the game starts okay so now we have the ball positioned at the beginning and now we just need to give it some direction so that it will head in a downward direction now if we tell the ball to go in a direction of 180 degrees let's just see what that would look like so if I put 180 down here uh, it would go straight down we don't want it to necessarily always go exactly down we want to add a little bit of randomness to the game so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick more of a range that's shown by this triangle here and so I'm gonna say that we're going to pick a random number and have it move within somewhere within this triangle so let's go over to the operations and go and pick the random number here and now instead of 180 let's just make the random range from 140 to 220 so it'll be a little bit uh, to the left to a little bit to the right and not directly headed straight down and I can take this green block now and plug it in right on top of this 180 number in the blue block and so now uh, each time we start the game the the ball is going to head in some slightly random direction but still heading downward that's the key so we want it to head towards the paddle once we have the initial trajectory of the ball set what we want to do is we want to have it move uh, continuously and we want to have it bounce if it hits the edges and we also want to have it bounce if it hits the paddle so to do that I'm going to grab a forever block and inside the forever block I'm going to tell it to do the following things so first I want to say that if it hits any of the edges I want it to bounce so to do that I'm going to switch to the motion blocks and you can see there's a block here that says if it's on an edge then bounce it so I'm going to put that inside the forever block so each time it moves it checks first to see if it's on an edge and if it is then it bounces the next thing we want to do is if it's touching the green paddle we want the ball to bounce once again so to do that I'm going to use an if block to check to see if it's hitting the paddle and in here is the if condition and in there I'm going to ask to see if it's touching so I'm going to use this touching block right here and I'm going to change this to be paddle and I'm going to plug that right in there and now we say if it's touching the paddle we want to turn the ball in a different direction so I'm going to come over here to the motion blocks and and I'm going to turn the ball and once again I want to use this random block to turn the ball with some sort of randomness to it so that it doesn't behave in a predictable pattern otherwise the ball and the paddle can get stuck in a fixed pattern and the game becomes less enjoyable there and then the other thing the last thing I want to do is I want to make the ball move and that's as simple as using a blue move block and by changing this number we can change the speed of the ball but right now 10 is probably looking to be a pretty reasonable speed for the ball so I'll just leave it at 10 for now the last piece of code we have to add for our game is for the butterfly so let's click on that sprite and the code for the butterfly is going to be surprisingly simple we want first when the game first starts for all the butterflies to show up at the top of the screen we're going to code one butterfly right now and then we'll just duplicate the block so let's grab a flag at the beginning here to see what's going to happen and we're just going to use the show command uh, to uh, show the butterfly in case it's already been hidden so there I'm going to use the looks blocks and I'm going to just use the show here and then the next thing we want to do is that while the game is progressing so basically we want to keep doing this in a forever block we want to see if the 
uh, ball ever touches the butterfly, and if it does, we want to hide the butterfly. So once again, we're going to use the sensors and the if block. So here's an if block. We're going to use the touching sensor. And if the butterfly happens to be touching the ball, we want to do something in case we want to hide the butterfly. So we're going to just hide it here. And to make it a little uh, extra exciting, maybe we'll add a little popping sound to show that the butterfly has now gone away. And that's basically it for the butterfly. Let's test this out. So I'm going to hit the Start button. And let me see if I can hit the paddle here. Or maybe don't even need to do that. OK, and you can see that when the ball hits the butterfly, the butterfly disappears. Now, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this butterfly. By the way, right now the butterfly is hidden, but if you click on it, you can see that for a brief instant, it, it will show you, Scratch will show you where the butterfly is on the screen. So let's just come over here now and right mouse click and we'll hit duplicate and that'll be another butterfly and then we'll duplicate and we'll duplicate one more and now we'll have four of these and if I hit the start button you can see the butterflies are all here but I want them positioned right around here maybe and now let's start the whole game and see how it looks. Okay, so I think we've got our little Pong game going here, and that pretty much completes our Pong game.